Hey YouTube, and thanks for watching Junkworks Garage. Well, I got a package in the mail today, and I'm a little bit excited about. It's kind of going to be a fun project, um, and we'll go in more about why I'm doing it in a little while. But we're going to open this up here. It's from Amazon. I don't know who the seller is yet again. As usual, I will have a price, and if I find the name of the seller. Um, in the screen somewhere here. And what it is, it's a front leveling kit here. And it is for the, well this says 02 to 2013 and 07 to 2012 Jeep, Jeep Liberties and Dodge Nitros. Um, a lot of the stuff that says for the Dodge Nitro says it won't work for Jeep Liberties, but I've also found that some things will. But this actually did say it will work for the Jeep Liberty, let's hope so anyway. Um, oh, it gave me a nice little koozie thing here. Cozy koozie, what do people usually call that? Um, anyway, drink thing that we'll test out when we go camping. Oh, even better. Stickers. I don't know what those are, but I'll keep them around. There's a bunch of stickers, a bottle opener, and I don't know if that's a patch or an oh, air freshener looking thing. That's kind of cool. Um, this was one of the more budget kits I found that had really good reviews. So it comes with a couple of those. And also, for the rear, which I think you can buy these separately, but for the rear, it comes with some really hefty looking things here. Yet again, they're only welded a little bit, kind of seam welded, I would say, um, in three or four spots here. Um, looks like three spots. So they're not welded all the way around, which I personally would have done. And I also probably would have welded in here. But yet again, I am not an engineer. It doesn't say right here, but in the advertising, it said it was like an inch and a half to two inches, I believe. We'll see. We'll do some measurements. But uh, so far, I got to say I'm pretty happy with looks-wise. But wait, there's more. So we got this booby right here from Detroit Axle. Now here's the deal. The reason I'm doing this, you don't have to do this. Basically, this isn't going to do anything other than replace my shocks in the rear. That's what these are supposed to be here. And uh, I'm hoping these will work with that lift. We shall see. Uh, if not, we'll go. We'll, we'll figure it out. But uh, what I really need, and I know this will work, because these are basically the um, stock style struts here. And uh, the reason I'm doing the whole thing, first of all, uh, I could just probably replace just the coils, springs. But by the time I deal with doing that, these weren't very much, very much more, if at all, more expensive. So I'm just kind of reading through the instructions here and I decided I probably should throw this in my video to cover my own backside. So here's what I want you to listen to. You are knowingly modifying the vehicle and accept full responsibility of any changes that it may cause. So I'm not telling you to put this on your rig and as a do-it-yourself thing. Uh, they recommend, and I recommend, that you have this installed by a certified automotive technician, which I am not. So, therefore, if you watch this video and you do what anything I do, whether it's in the instructions or not, you are responsible for yourself. If you don't like the way I'm doing something, don't do it, and I'm not responsible if you do.
right here is the uh, cruise control unit here and it's a 10 millimeter and we're going to just go ahead and remove that get it out of the way we're going to carefully pull up on that and just kind of get it out of the way a little bit Now I'm going to do something I probably already should have done, and that's disconnect the battery here. And down behind the battery here, there's another 10 millimeter uh, the battery hole down, basically. It's basically a wedge. I got bored. Let's move me out of here. There's a wiring harness here and a wiring harness over here, and they're both definitely fighting for who gets to hold on better than. I can already tell I need to remove this as well. And I think that would have been better to do before removing this. So we got a purge valve right here. I actually have a video on replacing this, which seems to still be working. Um, and it just kind of sits on a little plastic hook over here and comes off fairly easily. So I'm going to take that off of there as well, because I think all this definitely will help to get that out of the way. But yet again, be real careful because we got um, plastic lines here. These are kind of plastic hard lines that go to this purge valve and they break easily. Oh, there is a wire down here. So right down here, there's another one of those clip things. There is where we need to be right here. So that, I believe, is all we have in here. Now it's time to go underneath. Um, I've hit some PB blaster on pretty much all the bolts underneath here. But we're going to start out right here with the uh, brake caliper here. No problem. Now this is the front of the car right here. Uh, the bumper is that direction. We got our tie rod going across here and right here and here we got the uh, anti sway bar in link because if I call it a sway bar in link people will say something. Proper tool for the right job here. Here, also use the improper tool for the right job. And then this should come out of there. So now we're down at the bottom of the spring and shock here, and we're removing this piece here. This is a clevis, is what it's called according to the book. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try and remove that. I'm waiting on this upper ball joint. I know I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm hoping if I can actually remove this, I'll be able to maybe get to that strut and remove the whole thing. Uh, maybe. Oh, the next step I'm going to take is go ahead and remove this here. I have a 21 millimeter socket here. I believe 
I believe you could use a 7 8 as well, but I'm not sure. So I got the 21 millimeter on here. I got my impact wrench. You can do it by hand. Um, this just makes it easier. So, and then on the other side of this, it appears it also has kind of a captured bolt as well. So we're gonna go for it. Oh, and the captured bolt just snapped and sparked. So it's not capturing very well. Yep, it just bent it. So I kind of clamped a vice grip to that. I'm hoping it'll hit right there and not pop off of there. Well, unfortunately, my vice grip's held, but the bracket fell off. Now I might be able to actually get a wrench on there, though. Right. Well, I was able to tap an 18 millimeter on there. Um, I could have maybe used a three quarter, but it felt kind of loose. So with the problems I'm having, I didn't want to strip more. So I got a really tight fitting 18 millimeter on here. All right. All right. Ooh, that's warm. Smoking. So now this seems to be coming out pretty easily, surprisingly. So we got this one off down here. We got to go to the top. We got another, it's the 21 millimeter, same thing. But on this side, um, it appears that this is threaded here. That there's no nut on it. So we're going to go ahead and pop that loose. And that's just loose in there right now, but it's definitely seized up to this so i'm gonna have to take something and uh push it apart here a little bit so we're at this upper clevis here and i'm gonna try and split this apart right here i got a couple of nuts big giant nuts that actually fit in there really well or fairly well or fairly tight and I'm going to stick those in there so that the uh, bolt here hits on there. And I'm bringing it in backwards. Hopefully you already can tell that. And I'm just going to tighten this up and just kind of push out. Hopefully. Uh, that was kind of trying to climb up inside here. So I found this washer here. And hopefully now that it's pushed apart some more here, we can get it all in. Oh yeah, there we go. That's falling off now. Now the biggest thing is, is can we get it off and out of the way enough? Took a little fang dangling, but that is out now. So, and again, this is just hanging in here now. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think I can get this, but I do think this is gonna have to go up a little bit. There you go. That is the best way to pull one of these out and put one of these in. I'm hoping we still have to put the new one in. Most instructions, including the ones that came with my lift and stuff, say that you have to undo this. I've seen people pull all this stuff apart to try and get this out. But in my case anyway, I am not seeing why you would have to do that. So now, if you were planning on reusing this, you would have to get some sort of a um, strut spring compressor type thing on here. You can rent those or buy them, whatever way you want to go. 
Um, and then you would have to pull this apart and this can get very dangerous messing with this stuff. For not much more money you can just buy the whole thing. So now it's time to pull this out of the box. Gotta say, I mean, all in all, it looks really good. It's got nice rubber uh, isolators in this area. Spring looks pretty good. Everything, all in all, looks basically what a stock one would look like. Here's the kind of little bit scary part, point of no return kind of thing. Uh, to put this on here, it does not fit because these... Uh, bolts are hitting on the bottom of this right here so they must be cut down the first thing I need to do is put this on here and go as far as it'll go and uh, kind of see what I need to take off of this This is the point of no return here, so once you do this, you aren't sending nothing back. And, uh... That is shorter than I hoped. Okay, I screwed something up. Well, I will be tearing this apart. So, if you're just doing a spring, you're gonna learn how to do that because I'm gonna go. It's too bad, if I would've done it on this one right here, I probably could've got it out, but because I did it on this one, I probably won't be able to get it out. So we're gonna hopefully cut this correctly this time and not have to go through a whole rigmarole. And I'm gonna do it the way I planned on doing it the first time, but I wanted to pull out some measurement stuff and make it look somewhat better as far as video. And the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to flip this around this time. That way, if I do still screw up again, I can press this one and I can press this one out without tearing this spring apart. Um, which is what I had to do in the last one if you want to go watch that. But regardless, now we're back to this video getting just the job done. So, as you can see here, this bracket will not go on to here all the way. Um, you put this on, I hope, and it sticks out and you know, half inch or so. So, for this lift, you have to cut these off. So, what I decided to do, and what I was thinking about doing last time, but then I got my calipers out and made it too complicated. Because um, I'm going to actually take this right here. I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to lock that nut down onto that. Not super tight. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it to this one right here since I got two lines I'm gonna cut it in between the two lines here and then if it's still too long to fit on there I will touch it up but to cut this I am also going to leave this nut on here like that and we are gonna go ahead and cut this I need to get ear protection So careful, that's going to be hot. But what this nut does, in theory, is make it so I can pull this off and it'll kind of re-thread this part right here. And then I should be able to put it back on as well, easier. So a little tip you get there. Piers were just dead on right there. It's not touching, but there's barely a hair's width in between there. So I think that's a good, good measurement right there. My battery died there, so you didn't see where I went next. I went ahead and I grabbed my calipers 
and from the bottom part here I went all the way to the tip of the top here and then I went around and I marked all these um, yet again double check because I did screw up on a couple of these uh, I decided to go air on the side of a little bit more than less so if I have to grind it down a little bit it'll be all right but uh, so I went around marked them all I'm gonna cut all the rest of them you don't need to see that so when I get done with that we should be starting putting on this now we got these all cut down to size and I believe that should fit on there nicely I want to make sure it's good and flat here we don't have any problems there's a little bit of wiggle room and yeah, but uh, all in all I'm pretty happy with that now here is my biggest thing I'm debating on whether I want to put the locking nuts on this one or up top I think I've decided on this one because if anything ever does back off I'll see these I'll be able to get to these easier anyway um, as to where these are gonna be a lot more difficult so I'm just gonna lock tight as well as put the lock nuts on so they're gonna have doubly doubly done here um, so to speak but part of the thing is to do that you gotta put the nuts on part way as you lift this up I think I'm gonna go ahead and use red thread locker on these just for the simple fact I really don't want this to ever come apart and if it ever does I won't be reusing these studs anyway so uh, I haven't decided how I want to do this exactly here yet again these are already locking nuts so they should do their job but I don't trust much anything anymore to do the job it's supposed to do Now, I'm sure there's a torque spec on these. I will leave that to you. I'm gonna go with tight. I think it's time to stick this thing in finally. So yet again, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up and around here just to kinda keep it from getting caught in between things. Be real careful you don't scrape it too hard on there. And then we got the two far away ones on this side and the two closer ones on this side which i'm talking about this they're closer here further away here and i'm hoping we can get this up in here now i know for a fact if i didn't have the lift on here i could throw this slap this up in here with no problem um, definitely don't have to tear apart near as much stuff as people say you have to but I am questioning, we are going to find out together whether or not this will go up in there and then I'll be able to hopefully get this on. I may need to put this on first. I am not sure. For right now, I'm going to remove this and try and pop this loose for now. All right. And this is a 13 16 or 21 millimeter, which is what I have an impact here. And again, you can do it by hand. To. I'm going to let down the jack here. I'm hoping maybe it'll pop loose. That it didn't. Sometimes you can knock on these and it'll pop them loose. Sometimes you can't. This side, I hit it right here one time with hammer. One good whack and it popped right loose why i don't know but there you go you may get lucky and it'll pop loose and you won't have to rent the tool so i got this on here got this on here got a three-quarter wrench and i am going to snug it up a bit and then come on now whoa 
All right, well, that was the polar popping. Well, something popped, and I don't know if it was the tool or the, yeah, I think the tool must have popped loose a little bit here. Because that didn't come loose. Oh, no, it did. It came loose, so that popped loose, so that worked. Good, good, good. is pretty well in there now it's a matter of knocking this up here all right i'm actually gonna pry this back apart so it's easier to maneuver i probably would should have done that to begin with just so this moves a little bit easier Do some more maneuvering of things here. Get that out of there. Wow, didn't want it to go quite that far. But that probably did help. Yet again, we got things hanging that we might not want hanging things from, but also this does not want to go in here anyway. Let's go. Okay, that goes up quite a bit still here. So, I pulled this down. And the problem is, is there's actually a place right here that this, this sets on here. And getting this above that is not turning out to be super simple. I bought a new tie rod in. And right now I'm kind of pushing this past where I want to be pushing it. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and take it out of the equation because I have new ones anyway. All right. It um, is a 21 millimeter or 13 sixteenths. Either one will work. Yet again, I walked away from this and now I'm back again. Um, don't remember exactly what I did yet again. No matter what I do, I'm going to have to do a front end alignment on this thing. And to do that, you got to mess with these. So I'm going to see, I'm going to lube those up first of all and let those sit for a while with some PB Blaster. Yet again, not a sponsor, wish they were. Um, but I'm going to lube those up, let them sit for a while, probably lube them, lube them a few times today. Um, and then come in here and try and break those loose. And then that should make it so this should come forward and back. Again, we're on the front right hand side of the car. I took that little jack there and I've kind of taken the weight off of this. Uh, a arm here. Uh, hopefully things don't fall apart too much. I'm not planning on pulling these bolts all the way out. I just want to loosen them enough that I can adjust it to where that a arm will come forward and I can hopefully plant that in there. So back here where we marked it, that is a 21 millimeter. And this one right here is, I believe, a 24 millimeter. I got the 21 millimeter on the socket here, on the wrench here. And that's going to go up against there. I had to put the extension on this because that was getting in the way there. I could bend it out of the way. We might have to, but right now I'm going to try this. And I got my face shield on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like a charm. So that is completely loosened up there now. Um, I might take a little tap, see. Yep, I can pull that in and out pretty easy if I need, when I need to. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, well I'm working on the other side, and I cannot make that long 21 millimeter socket and wrench work. So 
I'm gonna have to resort to this. You may have to as well. All broke loose, but I'm not gonna lie. Um, you're gonna need at least a large half inch, maybe even three quarter inch breaker bar to break those loose in a lot more oomph than I wanna deal with. So uh, highly recommend, I think, an air impact would probably work if you got one of those. I don't know. I will say my air impact has nothing on this uh, rigid impact here, there. I do have a video on that. You can go check out my tools and reviews if you want to check that out. So now these are loose. I can take this and move this around. As I pull this around this way, I believe, this piece here should shove that direction, which is what I need. Oh wow, yeah. Push that right on out. In fact, it's, it's pushing it so far, it's pushing that off the thing there. Alright. So that's as far out as I can make this thing go. You are going to have to mess with this stuff. Go in, you're going to have to get it as close as you can anyway as far as alignment. Then either trailer it or drive it to an alignment shop if it's close. And have the alignment done on this rig. Yet again, I'm going to try it myself because I've had two alignments done now. Neither of which were done correctly and wore out my tires right after I had them done. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the jack stand. On this one here. Oh boy, that's really holding that a lot. Wow, that just let that go down a lot. Well, I'm still having trouble holding all this and pushing on all that. It's getting closer, but... Honestly, I don't know. Where's my bigger hammer? Well, I wired this up, so it took some pressure off of this ball joint right here. I'm not gonna lie, I got some makeshift 2x4 screwed to a board to make my jack sit sideways a little bit and hopefully pull out on this as much as I can. So it finally kind of got in there a little ways. So I'm gonna take this and see if I can't somehow make things line up a little better. I got that sort of lined up, which doesn't help the other side, the fact that it seems to be partially bent. So I'm going to stick this in here. And we're going to work on the other side now and use another one. All right, so I'm using this here, which is the for the sway bar or anti-sway bar and prying that so I can get that in there. Now, I'm hopefully gonna get this bolt in here. I am not uh, above smacking things with hammers when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I'm just going to tap it. You know what? So now I'm realizing I actually put this in the wrong side. It needs to go in this direction. So I'm going to take my other punch here, stick it in, and pull the other one out. And hopefully this will work that way. And again, I'm gonna, uh, use the pry bar. Now, and I'm gonna tap it in. I know people don't like it, but I've never messed up threads once doing this, so. I think that's more of a wives' tale than anything. And we are finally in. Not gonna lie, that was kind of a bear. 
Uh, and we got the nut, which will go on here. And I am going to go ahead and throw a little bit of Loctite on that. So the next thing, before I get this all attached up, I need to make sure I remove this and put it back up underneath here, because otherwise this will be all trapped kind of where it is. And uh, it needs to go through this other side here. So and we need to make sure we twist it and turn it the direction it wants to be twisted and turned so that it can go right here. So yet again, I'm just going to take this and tie it up here for now. So I got this bigger jack set up here and uh, this is where I'm definitely saying if you do anything I do and you hurt yourself, I am not responsible because this is where we're trying to compress that spring and I'm hoping the body's heavy enough, but it's probably going to pull it up kind of off of the jack stands and things like that. So you really got to pay attention to what you're doing before you do it. And All right, now we're definitely lifting this car off of the jack a bit here. So there we go. Uh, what did I do with the nut? There's the nut. I'm going to put that on there. So in theory, these nylock type nuts are only supposed to be really used once. But I actually looked around. I cannot find one at, with this thread pitch for some reason at Ace or anywhere else. They had some they said might work at O'Reilly's, but they would only sell me like six of them and it was like 50 bucks. So, so I'm going to throw some thread locker, lock Permatex stuff on here. Not a sponsor, but I like this stuff because it's high strength but removable. And, uh, and this doesn't look like it's been off and on a bunch of times. A lot of people say there's no problem using these more than once. But uh, you, this is where, yet again, I say I'm not responsible if you do what I do. You need to make up your own decisions on whether you're okay with it or not. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit in there. We're going to stick this on here and yet again you need to figure out your own torque specs. So we got that locked down. This worked good. You just got to be very careful. Now I'm going to take some of this excess thread locker from the thing I did before and uh, we're going to go ahead and put that on there. And you're going to torque it down to whatever, yet again, specific specifications you would like to torque yours down to. So now I just need to put the brake back on and uh, I'm going to re be replacing some part, other parts and pieces while this is off here. Those will be on other videos. So I have also realized that I'm going to have like a three hour video the way this is going to show everything I want to show. So in that case, if I fast forwarded through something like the removal of the battery and the battery tray and the air box and those kind of things, I will have videos showing those in more detail. Um, I just, I have to cut this down so I can't show everything in this video or nobody will watch it. Um, but if you cannot figure out how to take the air box out or take off the battery tray go ahead and go check out my jeep liberty playlist um, on my channel and those will be in that playlist so i've been messing with the kind of the steering system here on both sides and i noticed when i went to pivot this that i was having problems with this brake line um, pulling really tight um, and I don't know for sure, but I will say if you're very careful, because these are old and rusty, I noticed that this, since this was tight, if I just kind of carefully bent up on this a little bit, carefully, just a tad bit, 
I could uh, take and make a little bit more slack in the line up over here. So you can choose to do that if you would like or not. That You need to base that on how yours seems to be functioning. Mine felt a little bit too tight in this area. So um, just in case it bottomed out a little bit more or we had any more stuff, I decided to go ahead and do that even while you know, once I get the wheels and tires on and I get the suspension all aligned and everything's back in place, it may be fine. But even while messing with that, it felt like it was pulling on this a little bit too much. So you might want to keep an eye on that. And don't forget to tighten up the upper bolts that are on the uh, shock tower up there for the, the upper part of the lift there. Uh, I still need to do that as well, but don't forget to do that. You're going to torque those down to whatever specifications you've deem necessary and I am going to probably put a drop of Loctite on those as well just for precaution. When we're all done we'll have the measurements coming up. As you can hopefully see I have tape here and what I did is I marked from down there and came up and marked a line across right at a specific mark or right at a specific measurement um, and I did that on all four corners and I have everything written down, so we're going to go sit down in the chair and discuss where we're at on measurements. Now, keep in mind, I have done nothing other than set this down, and I jounced it. I rocked it back and forth, both front and back, staying here. So, these measurements are probably going to change a little bit once you start driving it and things start settling in. But, i got to say I'm pretty impressed. So, we'll go up front here and we'll talk about it. So, here we go, the measurements. First of all, I'm going to say, <laughs> got to get you here. Uh, please go check out my playlist for this Jeep Liberty. Um, not only is it going to have the lift video, um, I'm going to do front and back separately, as you've already probably noticed. Um, but I have several other videos on this Jeep fixing other problems with it, including some automotive, auto body, fixing some rust and things like that. So, uh, please go check out my videos so I can get a paycheck. Now, back to it. The right front, I picked up exactly four inches, which surprises me. The left front, exactly four inches both measurements to the exact mark was four inches on the dot in the front and that's the row right rear i got two and a quarter inches of lift in the right rear and in the left rear i got two and one eighth inch lift so there's a quarter inch off there somewhere but i have a feeling once i drive it around like i said and it jounces more and bounces more that we will measure this again and some of those measurements not only are going to change some but probably go down a little bit as things settle in also keep in mind i have not done a front end alignment on this i do not believe i can do a rear alignment and i don't believe there's any way to really align the wheels on this because it is a solid axle so there's no real way to do that all together, I am pretty happy. I like the looks of it. The only problem now is my tires are too small, but they are brand new. They're less than a couple years old. So. Well, uh, unfortunately, I ran out of SD card right there at the end, so I'm not exactly sure where it left off. Not to mention, by the time I change out SD cards, my brain tends to quit remembering exactly what I was saying anyway. But regardless, we got a decent lift. Um, I think I was talking about keep in mind that I have not driven it. it things will change. Um, oh, and I was talking about the tires. It does now have smaller looking. The tires look almost too small on it. I don't know. We'll look. When I get it outside, it'll be a better judgment on that. But yet again, the tires on these this thing are brand new. They're within a couple years old. Um, when we bought it, they were brand new. And We've only had it a couple years, so um, I probably will not be changing those out anytime soon unless I can put these tires on something else and later on put bigger tires on it. So if there's a tire company out there that would like to see their tire on one of my in one of my videos, I would very much appreciate that because right now I can't afford tires. All in all, the front end was fairly difficult. I will put it right out there. There was a lot of thinking involved with that one 
you definitely have to, uh, for the lift, you have to tear everything apart and kind of move things around. Uh, and, and it's just going to be what it is. Otherwise, you're not going to get in there. If you don't put the lift on here, you're just doing struts, man, that would be so easy to just pull in and pull out. They're really not difficult at all. So that extra, what ended up being four inches of lift made it a, a it made it a lot more difficult. Well, get out there and get your junk working. Thanks for watching Junk Works Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all and master of none. You all have a good one.